So I've been searching for an affordable and easy to use gimbal for my Sony a7C. Unfortunately, most Sony camera bodies have very poor in-body stabilization, and having a gimbal as a Sony user is as essential as having a tripod in my opinion. Finally, I think I found the right budget-friendly gimbal that gives very impressive stabilized footage, which is the AK2000C by FiuTech. This gimbal is likely one of the best budget gimbals on the market given its feature set. Check out this comparison of me using my Sony camera with SteadyShot enabled versus just using the gimbal itself. As you can see, the Sony camera is super shaky with all the micro jitters, and that's with IBIS enabled. I tried my hardest trying to stabilize the handheld footage, but it was really difficult. I was absolutely blown away by the results of this. So one may argue, you can just fix this all in post-production. Well, I'm not really a big fan of this. I, I really don't like having to do extra work in post-production, especially if it involves having to do very computational stabilization with Catalyst Browser or using this warp stabilizer in Adobe Premiere. I just find this very annoying, especially in post-production where I just want to get my video out as quick as possible. And worst of all, using these digital stabilizations reduces your field of view, so it gives you a tighter shot, and it also degrades image quality. So in order to get the best results, I much prefer to use a mechanical stabilizer to stabilize my footage. One thing I want to quickly mention is how much I love using the joystick when I want to do panning and zooming. This is a lot of fun and it's a joy to use, no pun intended. And just being able to get some really smooth pans and tilts when I'm doing my product shots is just so wonderful. This type of movement really adds another dimension to my video. And it's nice to not always have to take out my really heavy fluid video tripod, which is really big and cumbersome to use, just to do some panning shots. So setting up this gimbal was really easy for the first time. You just need to stabilize on the three axes one by one, and it's honestly super easy thanks to all the locks. What's also really nice is that my Sony a7C is in a small rig cage, which has a built-in Arca Swiss plate. So this means that I can just stabilize the camera once, and then if I want to remove it and maybe put it on my tripod, for example, and, and do something else with it, and then put it back on the gimbal, I don't have to do all the rebalancing because it's just a quick release plate from Arca Swiss. Now, my camera setup is quite hefty in my opinion, thanks to the really heavy lens from by Sigma, the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 art lens. The whole setup with the body cage and lens is about 3.15 pounds or 1.4 kilograms, which doesn't sound too heavy, but if you think about that weight on top of the weight of the gimbal itself, it can be honestly really hard to maneuver the gimbal with all the camera setup on it. Thankfully, I got the kit that comes with the versatile handle, which is just an optional extra grip accessory, and this makes handling the gimbal setup so much easier. I definitely think it's worth the minor price difference if you're gonna get the kit with the actual uh, versatile arm accessory, because honestly, it feels so light. When, you, when you're using this, it just feels light to handle, and you can get some really cool, very interesting low angles, which honestly would be really hard to do handheld. It would break my back, or it would just be very, very annoying to film otherwise. Overall, I have to say, you definitely want to get the arm accessory. It's a great addition. And in terms of the motors and how they handle all this weight, it had no issues at all. I'm very impressed by how strong the motors are and how long the batteries last. So talking about using the interface and the buttons on the actual gimbal, I have to say it's all very, really intuitive. And the touchscreen is very responsive, thank, thank goodness. I was really concerned about this. So being able to, honestly, I use the touchscreen more than anything because it's just so, so intuitive, so easy to like swipe around and then tap. It's just very responsive, no, no lag at all. Now you can swap between all the different modes using the trigger buttons or the mode button or the, or the touchscreen. So you get many options. There's the panning movement where left to right movement is prioritized. There's the follow movement where left to right and up and down uh, movement is prioritized. And then there's the lock mode, which is something I personally use a lot and it's for great for tracking shots. So let's say I want to kind of zoom in on this computer setup on my on my desk. You can see that I can just lock the camera angle and no matter what I do, it's going to stay stabilized and fixed on that particular angle. There's also the all follow mode, which is a point of view, kind of a 360 degree where it just follows everywhere where you go when you point around. There's also the inception mode where <laughs> like the movie Inception, you can rotate the entire camera 360 degrees. That's a really cool effect if you want that stuff. There's the selfie mode for people who are really big into social media. And of course, the portrait mode for those TikTok shuffler dancers. For those that are into photography, there's a time lapse mode, which goes up to eight hours. You can film like some really cool, interesting time lapses. I personally don't use this because I'm using it primarily for video. 
Now I really like the feature set, it's not too complicated, it's not too crazy. Using the native app is also really easy to use. Bluetooth pairing is just super simple, I didn't have to set anything up. You just download the app and you can control the gimbal from the app, which is really nice. Now the only con that I have with this camera is that it's not technically compatible with all the Sony cameras that are currently out, and I'm hoping with a firmware update it's soon going to be coming. But honestly for me this is not really a big deal because I don't plan on using that. I don't mind just hitting the record button on the camera, or I can tie in my phone uh, with the Sony remote control app attach it to the gimbal, and then I can just use that as a remote and a monitor. So overall, I'm very happy with this gimbal. I think it's in a very important arsenal in my filming toolkit so that I can finally shoot professional looking footage that is stable without breaking my budget. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you have any questions about this particular gimbal, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll also leave a link in the description for this particular one. And if you like this video, please do give a like. It really helps our channel. And click the subscribe button if you want to see more budget-conscious, friendly camera gear reviews. See you in the next video.